Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanalyze the Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333, and the last match for tonight is going to be between Caprices and Rar on on Trojan Hills. My favorite map. Well, one of my favorite maps. Ravage is also really good, but Trojan Hills is one of my favorite maps, and that's what we're going to be playing on today. Or at least what we're going to be showing the match on. Let's just get to the game. Capris is going for the Cloaky Bot Factory while Rar is going for the Gunship Factory because Rar goes for the Gunship Factory all the time in an unusual position. Normally, players do not start over here. They normally start over in the position that Capris is in or in this middle position over to, well, the center, back center. This is kind of the defensive position. This is the offensive position. And this one here is the cheesy position because that's the position that you go for cheese in because your opponent is going to scout that one last which I imagine that Capricis will do, and excuse me for a second because I need to turn on that smooth mesh scrolling because this map really does not work well. It does not work well when you're not using smooth mesh scrolling. It only works well if you're using that. Sorry, if you're not using smooth mesh scrolling, it's weird. That function, the engine needs to be fixed for some of that. Flat maps don't work very well with that feature for some reason. It's really weird, but there's just random spikes over in the corners. Whatever, this map doesn't have that problem. Shop talk aside, Caprices just going for loads of glaives, a bit of harassment. Oh, actually, Caprices, well, they scouted out over here already, so they already know that the Southwest doesn't have anything, but they figured out very quickly that the Southeast is where things are. That or they just realized, oh, hey, gunship, my opponent's probably in the Southeast, especially since the approach vector was from the East. The only way that could happen is a Southeast building, Southeast starting base, so RAR really likes their gunship cheese. They always like their gunship cheese. That's always what they go for. Or they go for the commander cheese. Or, I mean, occasionally they go for the standard factory, but not usually. Not not often. Often they go for this kind of cheese, either with gunship or with commander. And, I mean, I'm glad to see that someone is really trying to push gunship as far as it can go. Because gunships are a factory I like, so push them far. See how they work. Granted, gunships are in the meta, so it's not like you have to push it that far. They're going to be used. So, Capricious... Trying to defend as best they can. Lotuses, I I guess, work. They're not a bad option. I mean, Banshees stay there, get hit. Against a handful of Banshees, not a bad option. Though, I really do think that Capricis would probably want to invest into a Razor if the gunships keep coming about five minutes in. Five minutes in only. If it's three or four minutes in, no. But five minutes in, yeah. Five minutes in, that's the point where I'd say, yeah, the gunships, they're not stopping. Rar is not going to be trying to go for gunship trickery into another factory. They're going hard gunship, and they probably are anyway, because Rar is just a hard gunship player. That's how they play. They go gunship and gunship. If they're going to go gunship, they stay gunship. We've seen it many times before where they throw one Banshee out just to scout out, and they figure that the information gained from that Banshee, and the fact that they have Banshees and they can hit from the air, is worth the fact that their opponent might set up counters for it. Like, it's still worth just hitting several times with the Banshees, and we've seen it, it works variously. Sometimes it works well, sometimes it works poorly. It really depends on how the opponent goes. In this particular case, I think Capris is going to have a hard time expanding. That's going to be the biggest problem. I mean, at this point, that north that north center expansion is locked out. Capris basically cannot expand there without having all the gremlins near it. Now, where are the cranes, though? Because RAR needs to expand beyond this. They can't just have their main base and that's it. They need to expand over here and they need to expand in general because they can set up their, well, not quite defend expansions, but there's enough pressure put on to Caprices that RAR can just take expansions without worrying about it. They just take them. It's no problem. But I think RAR right now is going to be trying to just push through Caprices' main base and hopefully try to win basically in one fell swoop. I don't really see that happening any other way. Not for RAR anyway. Not the way RAR tends to play. And at this point with, what, eight Banshees? Seven Banshees? There's not an eighth in production? No, seventh in production. But Banshees pretty much infinitely against an infinite number of Gremlins, which are going to take care of the Banshees. I mean, the sheer numbers that they have so far. Especially considering Rar has... Well, actually, Rar is a bit of a weaker economy right now. And Gremlins are about half the cost of Banshees. Well, Banshees 220, Gremlins 150. About the same cost, but not that far off. However, I do think the Gremlins are going to have a much easier time dealing with this. I mean, they reveal themselves, sure, but those gremlins are going to chase off the Banshees. They've already killed one. Second one's going to die soon, but Caprices' commander going down, too, and that's Caprices' commander down! So RAR, right now, basically has a massive economic advantage. Just four minutes into the... Four and a half minutes into the game, they have a 
economic advantage that's actually very meaningful. This is this is the time in the game you want to kill the commander, because that's when the commander is going to matter. The commander's death is going to matter. Like, up until about 25 metal per second. So yeah, that was a good kill. And the gremlins now, I mean, they did a decent job, but the problem... This is the thing that I always say about razors and gremlins and such against banshees, specifically. Banshees can deal a lot of damage, and if they're going for a suicide run, they'll just deal their damage and not care. And if they're going for a suicide mission to kill something, gremlins and razors do not have the DPS to kill them in time. Now, stardusts do, and warriors do, and I suppose to a lesser extent, defenders do. If you build enough of them to high alpha, the defenders can be worth it. I mean, they're only 800 health each, so three defenders will one-shot a banshee before it can really do too much damage. However, the damage it can do involves killing one of those defenders. If there's a large group of Banshees, that is. And now Rar has expanded. Rar does have cranes going on. That's exactly what they need. Expanding slower than I would have expected for the amount of damage they've been dealing, but they're still expanding. The problem is going to be closing this out, because Capricis, they have their commander reclaim. They're not going to lose too much economy because their commander is going to be basically feeding their reclaim machine for some time. They have the northern expansion. They aren't losing that too quickly. I mean, it's not as locked down as Rar would like it. So Caprisus is not completely done. And at the same time, Caprisus is still building up more and more gremlins. And the more gremlins there are, the more DPS they have right at the start. I mean, granted, it's only about 18 damage each, but when you get a bunch of them together, I mean, right now, this is a little over 200 damage a shot for the entire group. So the entire group together will four-shot a Banshee, and that... What's the DPS on that? DPS is 61, so that'll be... For that entire group... That's 720 damage a second. That's a little over a second and maybe 1.2 seconds to kill a Banshee. That, at this point, is becoming scary. Rar can't just attack willy-nilly at this point, but they are going for the Clokeybot factory, so it's not going to be that big of a problem. The Clokeybots are kind of... No, Clokeybots are a good option. Get some Glaives, hunt down the all the Gremlins, take out all the, grem take out all the Gremlins, and then from there, just use all your Banshees to finish things off. Granted, warriors are coming in. I mean, this is what I mean, too, is that Capris is going for the warrior. That will help against Banshee, but I guess they might be reading a ground raider force coming in to get rid of the gremlins. And they'd be right. That's exactly what's happening. I mean, there we are. There are the glaives. So Capris is on point with their reeds, getting that warrior up. Although, like I said, warriors are good against Banshees, too. Getting that warrior up, making sure that they have preparations just in case those glaives start to be targeting anything else. Or glaives come up, or bandits come up, or anything else. That would be raiders, other than, I guess, ducks. Ducks are harder to deal with, but not anything else. And Banshee's coming in again. Warrior not in the main base. The warrior's out of position, and the warrior under construction will not be done in time. No, will not be done in time. There's actually not enough economy going into that factory right now. That factory's on low priority, meaning everything else going on with all the production of the economy is stopping the warrior from being built. Gremlin's coming in here, but the main base has been torn to shreds by Rar. Not sure if that was worth the trade. And we do have a Razor. Good. Good on Capricis. Got that up. But they didn't get up the Warrior in the right position. That's still going to be a massive blow. Though at this point, Capricis' main problem is a lack of energy. Actually, that is that is a crippling problem. That's going to kill them. That's going to lose them the game. They're reclaiming. They don't have any energy. They don't have the energy to build energy. And Rar following up with the Glaives just to finish everything off. That'll do it. I mean, all they have for energy are the Conjurer's plus three, or plus 0.3 energy per Conjurer. That's not much. And the Conjurer's going to try, but it's going to take several minutes just to build up one of these solar plants. Wind generators would be a better option right now just for how desperate things are. But even then, it's not going to be enough. Like, it would take a little over 15 times as long as normal to build one of these things. And one of these things already, like seven seconds or so, it'll take about half a minute to build these. And Capricus knows it, and that is game. So yeah, Rar's Banshee's just coming in. All they had to do is kill the energy. Kill the energy, finish the game. That's all they needed. And of course, the Gremlins getting hit by the Glaives and everything else getting hit by the Glaives. That did the trick, too. But the main problem was losing the energy at the end. I mean, really, it was just... Capricus could not expand, but they also just had all their energy core just concentrated into wind generators in their main base that were really vulnerable to Banshees. Hardly any solar plants, hardly any other production, hardly any other energy outside of their main base. And of course, Rar had no threat. 
Caprices was entirely on defensive. They had the Warriors coming in to either help out offensively as an assault unit. I think they were just trying to help defend against Raider follow-up and possibly help defend against more Banshees. But honestly, that that didn't work because the Warrior was not in the main base and the Banshees attacked. I don't even think Caprices had much radar. I'm honestly a bit surprised that happened. But yeah, Rar, good job there with the gunship start and the gunship, just the Banshee assaults there. Did a really good job. And Caprices, I gotta say, despite losing, that was a good set of defensive options. I mean, hard to go from defense to offense, but for the defense they did do, that was a good set of defense. Their defense was on point. I mean, they had the Warriors coming in, they had the Gremlins coming in, which weren't, weren't a bad idea. The Warriors could have come in earlier, though. That is the one thing I would say. The Warriors could come in earlier, and that would have stopped more Banshees from coming in sooner. But even then, I still think they didn't do a terrible job. I just think that RAR really knows how to play their gunship plan. That's, it's kind of tough to deal with RAR because RAR knows gunships. RAR uses gunships all the time. Anyway, that's going to be it for me tonight. Hope you enjoyed that. And also, just as a small little announcement, so for the next little while, probably for April, I'm going to be doing Sundays instead of Saturdays. Not sure. I might still do Saturdays. This coming Saturday, the 16th, I will not do. Probably do the Sunday. Same with the... Actually, the 30th, I'm going to be off in Seattle because there's a tournament. It's Northwest Majors. So I'm going to be doing that. But other than the weekend of the 30th and May 1st, and next weekend, I might be doing Saturday the 23rd. Not sure. Expect Sundays for the next few weeks, not Saturdays. But yeah, that was... That's why this is Sunday today, not Saturday. Also... The, as mentioned before, Dark Souls 3 thing will start. I am going to be doing a stream just for testing some mechanics out. Dark Souls 2 broke a bunch of mechanics from Dark Souls 1. A lot of basic things. People haven't even really tested this. I've looked up YouTube videos. The only thing I've seen people test for Dark Souls 2 even is rolling has input lag. It's about 15 frames input lag. Pain in the butt. But Dark Souls 1 doesn't have that. Hopefully Dark Souls 3 doesn't have that. There's a few things I want to check besides rolling input lag. That I haven't seen anyone else comment on. I've looked at reviews, I've looked at a few videos. No, I haven't really spoiled much of the game for myself. I spoiled up to the beginning of the High Wall of Lothric. That's about it. I haven't really spoiled much beyond that. So, don't worry about spoilers. This is basically still a blind playthrough, but I am going to be starting out just mechanics tests. The actual playthrough, the Let's Play, will be offline. I probably won't be streaming that. I have no plans to stream it. I plan to do it offline and then edit it together and put it up on YouTube directly rather than streaming it. Because I also plan to probably play for a longer time than one single episode and then after that cut them up because that's how let's plays are done it's just easier than trying to actually do like half an hour at a time especially for a long form game like dark souls because dark souls is a game where you're going to be playing for a long time anyway that's tuesday so tuesday's mechanics test for dark souls 3 and then friday i might do something for soul contingency because the proving grounds thing is being released or maybe skull heart skull girls stuff if i can get people on an exhibition match that i don't know that'll be a lot more preparation for the exhibition matchy stuff for skull girls no replay server like 0k, which is so convenient about 0k. I really wish that Skullgirls had that. Uh, anyway, that's that. So once again, thanks for watching. I expect Sundays for the next month. And have a good night.